Hi friends, welcome. I'm here with my friend Daniel today. We're going to talk about some of his photos that he's been taking of the Christmas trains in Chicago. If you have an Instagram feed, you've probably seen these come through your feed at some point. He's been taking some wonderful photos of these trains. Is it safe to say, Daniel, that you have been obsessed with these trains? Uh, you could say that kind of, yeah. Okay. Uh, over the years, I got created like a little bit of a challenge of an obsession about uh, trying to catch as much as I can with the train. Love it. And I feel like that's just a natural street photographer inclination to find something like, find something like holiday trains, something that jumps out. Oh, and yeah, definitely. Just, just like beat it to death and figure out every single angle that you can capture it from. Let's go to your Instagram feed. Let's have a leisurely chat about what you're up to. I think this would be a good first one to talk about. What we have here is a lovely overhead shot. And it seems like 90% uh, of these are overhead shots from what I can tell. And uh, probably utilizing the drone, which is actually, I think behind you there, right? Isn't that your, is that the drone that you use for these photos? No, this one is just a decoration, but yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> but yeah, that one was for drone. the fun. So here's the first photo I wanna talk about. We have a lovely shot. Uh, taken from sort of a, I don't want to call it a suburb, a less populated part of the city. Right, yeah. Uh, as, the, as the big part of the city in Chicago. And then we have a train coming through with these lovely blueish, whitish, green, red lights. The train is slightly blurred out. You can see the reflection of the lights on the train on the side of these, uh, what looks like apartment buildings, which I think adds a lot. You get this really nice atmosphere. And then the background, you capture this, the cityscape up at the top super well it looks lovely first off i am curious like what what did you shoot this with we were talking about oh, your decorative drone what what's your what's your real or <laughs> did did you shoot this with the drone or are you did you jump really high no no that, that one is from a drone this one this is taken with a, a mavic air 2 dji mavic ah. air 2 it was like a little bit past sunset so that was like blue blue hour that's why this guy looking like this all right so i got there run this year so basically this year i've been trying to take like photos of the train with the drone. There is a possibility that I didn't have last year. Yeah. So I'm looking for, for more frames uh, with the drone because one, one of the things of the train is that like it basically goes only one time during the day. So it's not that like- That was another thing I was gonna ask you about was timing of when the train comes through and how you know when it's coming through and all of that stuff. The CDA of, the, uh, of, of Chicago, they, they publish like the schedule of what line is gonna be each day the train. Ah. And they give you like like certain times, like it's gonna run from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. It goes and comes basically. It goes one round the, the train in, yeah. that, in that specific line. You have to plan it ahead, like oh, it's gonna come this way, blah, 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 and wait for it basically. This one actually, I was waiting for like 40 minutes because there was like a delay on the hmm. train, and I was like, what's happening? It's not coming, but it was way behind. It was, it was delayed, so it worked in my favor because. I was waiting and it, it was supposed to pass when it was daylight in the location, but because it was delayed, actually I got lit in, in night day. You can see it more, the brightness and I actually the light of the train. So the, it's like the, the unfortunate turn of events turned into a fortunate turn of events. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I feel like this train, shooting this train, having it in the, sh the scene probably makes it a little bit easier to grab a, a a really exciting because if this was a normal train i mean it would work it would be fine but it really wouldn't have the same strength as this this crazy neon train does yeah i really i really like that one the on the buildings how it looks a lot like purple and like blue because of the reflection of the light yes. in the in the walls i really like that part yeah that adds so much that's so good all right let's look at this one so now we have changed the angle quite dramatically and one thing i, I thought was kind of fun is they put a train car in the middle of this train and you can't see it super clear here but there's a train car that i guess has what's it like santa sleigh or something on there it, it's not actually a functioning train car santa goes there actually like, okay so there's, yeah there, there's a guy uh, uh, saying hi to people and stuff and it's santa that is going all, all along the way what i appreciate about that is that they they weren't thinking oh man we can't this real estate is precious. We got to get everybody into every part of the train as much as possible. So we can't have a train car that does nothing but looks awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I, lo I love that they were willing to do that. So th in this photo, we have a top-down shot. Uh, it's a great example of what you can do with the drone. That you, it's you know almost impossible to do it in any other way unless you have a helicopter. 
uh, yeah. top down shot of the train coming through and it's bending as it goes through the frame. And then we have the, the streets below. One of the things I'm seeing in, in these photos that uh, is really adding a lot is your use of motion blur. When you're setting up the shot with the drone, what is your shutter speed looking like? Like how, and, and did you have to spend some time dialing that in? So this uh, is around one eight, I believe, in this one. Oh, okay, wow. Yeah, it's pretty slow because like, I'm fighting against the darkness as well. Yeah, you know? yeah. Because it's, it's pretty dark there. So this one is, is pretty slow, I believe. But I was as well um, waiting for, for like half hour as well for this train because it's about planning, you know? Like I pictured mm -hmm. this, this photo in my head and I feel like, okay, yeah, this is gonna be a, a photo. And I you just have to, I feel like it, for the train, it needs a lot of preparation because it's like one moment and, it, and it's gone, you know? Right, so, oh and, yeah. And it, and that's photography in general, like, you know? Like when we yeah, see right. photography, <laughs> it's like that moment and it's gone, but the train is letting you know, okay, it's gonna happen in this moment. I think one of the more advanced techniques in photography is learning how to capture things at very specific times that only happen at that specific time or right. le learning how to plan before the photo ever happens. And I think that's what's, what often separates photographers from one another is the ability to make a really solid plan for how to capture a compelling shot. I love the motion blur even in the cars here. The addition of motion blur to all these shots really adds some drama to the scene. I, I don't think it, they would be nearly as strong without the train kind of dragging through the shot and these cars dragging through the shot. And you mentioned that you shot it an eighth of a second. I, I think that's so clever because that's something that's that would be much harder to do handheld as many street photographers do, but there's tons of tripod street photographers out there as well. In this case with the drone, it's, it's so stabilized that you can afford to drag the shutter that much yeah, yeah, and get a yeah. pretty clean image maybe a little bit of motion blur across the board, but it's not, in this case, it's really not enough to make the photo turn into an abstract mess. It's, everything's pretty sharp. No, yeah, and like the motion blur is because like you are moving in, in, in the, while, while the photo is taken, but like you can see everything is like sharp, like the buildings, like the actual yeah. speed is it, sharp. So I think it works really well. I mean like this for sure as well, taking photos of the train, like, Usually when you do drone photography, it's like you are very limited like for, for night. Usually you don't see a lot of uh, photos of night photography made with drone because they are not sure. like, they are not designed for that or at least not yet, you know? Right. So right, it, and the sensors are teeny for, tiny. Uh, yeah, exactly, exactly. So it, it can be like like uh, a learning process as well, like to push in uh, the camera as much as I can uh, this last couple of days with the, with the train because like I think you photos in the the dark was, I mean, I'm putting the, the camera in the worst situation the, it can be, I guess. Uh huh. How many, so was this a burst of shots? Actually, the train is, uh, if I tell you a secret, the train is not that long. Ah. This is, uh, yeah, this is like, uh, uh, I'm combining three photos. So oh, all right, all right. That long, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I was editing, I thought like, what about if I make it longer, if it, if it takes the, the whole thing and you can see more like the curve of, of the train. Yeah, but yeah that's this great. actually is, is the photos that I'm mixing together. It looks great, love it. Thank you. Yeah, that's very clever. What's a good video? I, I wanted to show off the video aspect of what you've been doing too. I know you, you captured some in, oh my gosh, that's really loud. I remember this happened last time, hold on. Sorry, sorry. Well, I'll just show it. At least I cannot uh, I don't There's hear Christmas it music playing in my ears right now. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Go no, ahead. no, no, no. I you can explain it. I still got to figure out how to make the freaking audio happen <laughs> in my headphones. For the videos, like the two times that I have taken videos of the train is because I have missed like my spot. I have been late to to catch the train, so I end up riding it. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. Let's uh, what's another one? Let's go to this one. I like this one a lot. So this one's a bit more in the city. We have the Chicago city skyline, or at least part of it. And we have the train weaving through a bit of an S pattern, kind of like that last one. It's cool because there's just a little pocket where it opens up and, uh, and, and moves through these shorter buildings where you can see the train. And so I feel like this one probably took a fair bit of planning. When you're scouting these spots, are you throwing up the drone, just kind of looking around, feeling it out? 
how do you how do you scout the location and know exactly how everything's gonna look because i mean obviously you could get there and there's like a giant building in your way yeah no yeah I, i'm trying the the drone and like looking for like for angles like you can try so so many different uh, compositions with like the regular train and then when 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 it's just a matter of oh uh, uh, i get okay, it so you're using the, you're it, using you know. the regular train as a test dummy Exactly, exactly. Basically, basically, ah, yeah. Fun. I have, I have the log there. Uh, it, I, it, it's gonna pass a train, always there. You know, I take the photo with the regular train, and then I, okay, yeah, this is gonna work, and then I can see it there later, like with the quality train. And now uh, talking about the quality train, I feel like now, where well, if I take a photo of the regular train, it's missing something, you know, because mm. uh, it's so different and so. You report so much like the quality train with the lights and everything. It's like a train of light. <laughs> yeah, that's it. This is where I get envious of people who can do like 3D art or like uh, pixel art because they could build the scene in their computer, but we actually have to go out yeah, and, and wait and around, and do and it find wrong. It. Now, to be fair, those people have to come up with the scene in their head or they have to reference the real world in order to create that scene. But uh, it's just, uh, I've always, that difference has always been very intriguing to me. And sometimes I'm like, I wish I could just open up, you know, Photoshop or something. And yeah, just yeah, great. Put together an like, entire world. Also, we don't have that skill yet. We got to find it in the, in the real world. <laughs> That's right. All right, let's see what's another one we can look at. This is one of the, the closer up shots, and I, I have some questions about this one. Were you using the drone for this one as well? No, this one is actually with a camera. This Great. Is, uh, yeah, this is from... from Those old-fashioned like, handheld cameras. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is from a parking lot. Mm. The, then I found a parking lot that is, is the train passed really close to it. I, I feel like I, I could almost oh. touch it right there. Was it like a parking deck? Like, how did you yeah. get up so high? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it was like a parking deck. It was like the pit floor or the, the parking lot. Oh, great. I would try and to I... take this photo and fail miserably. So this is the advantage of living there because you're able to know, you're able to have a better grasp on where things are and where you can, where you can get certain shots. Um, but I'm curious, like, how did you know that this shot was going to be able to happen? Or was this an accident? How planned was this? Well, uh, actually, I don't, uh, this is like a, like a carousel. I don't know. You can uh, pass yes. it to the yeah, second I'll, one. I'll shoot through. Show you something. So actually, in this one, if you pay very close attention to the in the top, you can see like a little light, like a red light. Okay, a uh, red that's, light. Uh, Wait, up here? Up, yeah, that's a yeah, plane. that exactly that. No, that's not a plane. That's my drone. Oh. Actually, I was taking photos. <laughs> Sick. I was taking photos <laughs> with both at the same time. I was like with oh, one hand multitasking. with the remote controller and the other hand the, the camera because I was not planning on the parking lot for this shot. I was just <laughs> going to take the photo with the drone. And when I was flying the drone, I realized, wait, there's a parking lot there. There is gonna, the train is going to pass really close. Excellent. So, so that's why I was like, oh, I had to do both. Uh, and uh, this one was like a, a little bit of luck in, in that sense. But it was taken to the drone that I found like the spot. I was like, wait, wait a oh. second. Okay. Yeah, I can oh, go okay, there. Okay, okay. You know, because like when, when I was flying, like uh, testing it, uh, I was like, I can go there, and the train is gonna pass through really close. That's amazing. So it's like you're using the drone as like a as like a, a pet owl that can help you find new new locations. Yeah. So and like I I, I post <laughs> I post the the photo of the drone as well. Uh, uh, so we go down a little bit. Okay, we're gonna scroll down here. Uh, that one. That one. That yeah, one. Exactly. So got it, you, got you it. can see the parking lot right there. Oh, great. Okay, so we have the parking deck over here. Yeah, so yeah, can, exactly. So the, There's like the parking deck. Yeah. The train got really close to you, and that's amazing. That's really amazing that you're able to capture that. Once again, so really see, nice yeah, exactly. motion blur, even in the cars, um, nice city skyline in the background. That's what you do so well, man. You're so good at, at, at putting a foreground and a, a city skyline background together. Yeah, I, really, I think I really like... Uh, like living in this city, there are cars so, so emblematic of Skyline. Like it's, it's iconic, it's super iconic. Like when you see this, you yeah. can recognize like like New York Skyline, like Chicago Skyline. You don't need the people to tell you this is the city because you see the buildings and say, oh, I know where it is. Mm -hmm. And you, you're also very good at putting the the highest buildings and the iconic buildings right in the middle, almost acting like a mountain peak for the city. But it, it can be hard to do that. Because you could have a scene where every, you know, a lot of things work together, but 
the Hancock building is just not even in the background or it's like way over on the right or something like that. Yeah. Um, but the drone, I feel like it definitely gives you a lot of flexibility in that regard. Yeah, yeah, like, like I was saying, it's like a flying camera. You, you can yeah. test so many It's a flying so many camera. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this photo is magnificent. Uh, we have a train. Well, first off, let's start from the bottom. We have a cyclist on the bottom, nice blue light going by, no cars around the cyclist, which is just, that never happens. It's amazing. And then we have a very tall bridge holding up one of these, one of these um, brilliant light trains. Then we have the Willis Tower. Ah, I got that mm -hmm. one right. Willis Tower in yeah. the background. <laughs> and then a little bit of the skyline, but I mean, the Willis Tower is so, I mean, the way that this photo was taken was kind of from a, a constrained position. It wasn't with the drone where you can just kind of hover to the left and put the tower back in there. You were much lower. And the fact that you were able to put the tower where it is in the frame is absolutely amazing. I and mean, this is like serious technical goodness. How did you go about this photo? Was this, did you take this with a drone? This looks handheld. Yeah, I know. This was, is with a camera. This is like a little bridge. The, the rest to like to get into the station. I was like in, in the middle of the bridge and just waiting for it. I was, this one is such a look as well, I feel. Like as many, it's one of those photos that you see it and, and it's like, oh my God, I cannot believe that I have this cyclist and the train. I think the cyclists added so much to this frame and, it, 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 and give it so much balance that, yeah. I don't know, I tried to picture this photo without the cyclist and I feel like it will look empty, the, the yeah. photo of the frame. So yeah, I, I was very satisfied with this one as well. Uh, now I think, I think another composition that would be absolutely nuts is like telephoto, I mean, this one looks, uh, quite telephoto already, but like tight telephoto angled up onto the train with the building in the background, right? That would, that would look so good. That would look like a movie. And the, the angle with the sky in the background, oh my gosh, that would be nuts. But but uh, this is equally as good for sure. So how how long did you have to, I just, I'm blown away by the fact that, because I'm thinking about how the train only comes through once, uh, I guess what, once, once or twice, well, once on this track in this direction in this way, right? Right, right. It will go one that way and then comes back in the left side. And right, the on the other side. So yeah. the fact that you captured the train and the cyclist, right, I mean, everything in this photo is absolutely perfect. Well, thank you. Yeah, I, I was very surprised by like how well it turned out because the same, because I feel like the cyclist adds so much to the, to the train. Yeah. And, and like as you it, said, and it scale, goes, a sense well, of scale, right? Yeah, it, definitely, it makes the whole thing feel bigger. And even the separation from the Willis Tower and the train uh, is, is very nice, very you know, very well done. It looks like it just kind of all fell into place that way. I, I feel like you can do a lot to plan a photo like this, but at the end of the day, the photo just has to come together. You know, you didn't speak to the cyclist. It's like, hey, exactly, it's like there, there's stuff that you're gonna plan. Twenty three. We need you to roll <laughs> through like, here. Like... <laughs> you need to be aligned with the train at this very moment. <laughs> uh, let's talk about this one really quick. This one's pretty nice. So we have the train now going where we're right in the middle of the city and the train is going into the city. We have a long stretch of track starting from us creating a leading line, really bright lights underneath the tracks, which I think adds some, some more in visual intrigue for us to zero in on. Then we have the train coming through nice and motion blurred heading uh, seemingly heading towards the city, but it could—I guess it could have been coming our way as well. And then we have the Willis Tower again, beautifully positioned in the middle of the frame, and um, all the rest of the city all around it. I assume this was taken with a drone. Yeah, yeah, this one definitely was taken with a drone. <laughs> this was not the, the, the frame that I was planning. Uh, my my frame was the, the the other one that is in that in that same pose right here. Oh yeah, okay. So we yeah, have an yeah. S curve now. Exactly. So, like, because, like, like I was telling you before, like, I've been trying to look, find where, it, where it curves, so it gives like more, it, it feels more dynamic. The train. Yeah, right. The, sure. The line. So this was my frame, and like the train is going towards the downtown, to, towards the city. So as soon as it passed there, I'm like, I'm gonna follow it a little bit just to you see it. how it looks. And I follow it, and I come up with this one that it blow my gotcha. mind. Oh no, this this look uh, way better <laughs> now. With this, this is the one. Yeah. This, yeah, yeah, with this leading line towards the city. I feel like when you when you do photography, uh, you are able to practice and practice. Then you can see this instance, you know, like yeah. by instinct, you can find it. It's like because it's happening all the time, you know, like the artist there and just taking the photo of it. But it's, it's 
to be able to identify uh, what is going to work and, and like seeing uh, in this like very fast because the train is going to go re really fast and the frame is gone. Mm -hmm. The more you shoot, the more you develop your intuition as a photographer. Yeah, exactly, exactly. All right, man. Well, I think this is a good place to wrap it up. I have enjoyed this. I think it's been a fruitful conversation. I think we were able to get into like a little bit of planning. I can't ex emphasize enough. One of the more important parts of photography, especially street photography, ah, all photography, I should say, but street photography in a unique way, let's say, is planning. To be able to develop your ability to plan out what is going to happen in an area at a certain time, being able to know when a festival is gonna happen if you like to shoot that kind of thing, being able to know when when the light train is gonna come through, yeah. um, being able to know what the light is going to look like in the morning, in the middle of the day, and in the evening and at night at this particular, lo this particular location. That is um, valuable. To, to have as a photographer, arguably more important than what you go out to shoot with, even though what you go out to shoot with is important. Another thing I think we touched on here, which was very useful, was the ability to have a good hand on, a good handle on your technicals, what your shutter speed is, what your f-stop is, all of those things, because these photos, they worked the way that they did because of your understanding of the way the camera works, the way the drone works, your comfort level with the drone. Yeah. Uh, and and I mean, this just just time, putting in time, maybe watching some YouTube videos, no, understanding. Yeah, learning like the limitations of the camera or like yeah. the advantage and, and know how to play with it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So I think uh, that was that was a big thing that we touched on as well. And so I like that combination of things. I think that was that was a good thing to to spend some time dwelling on. Here is a great example of that. So fantastic photos, Daniel. Keep it up. Thank you so much, James. All right. <laughs> All right. We're going to wrap it up here. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Have a lovely day. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Hmm. <laughs>